it's time for another video primer from Gemstone Mine Podcast. Today, we are doing a primer on Galta, Stormosaurus Rex. Mono Green Storm on its own is unique, with many of the lessons taken from CEDH lists, such as Selvala, Heart of the Wilds, Bro Storm being applied. If you enjoy deck themes such as Elf Ball or Storm, you should consider playing Galta. Galta is a mono green storm deck, which leverages several of green's strengths with efficient creatures and ramp, as well as creature dependent draw, as well as Galta's unique cost reduction mechanic in the command zone to draw through your deck and storm opponents out. This build of Galta is a linear deck, built with consistency in mind, but it tends to leverage that consistency to maximize the odds of playing spicy cards over efficient ones. A linear deck will be more consistent than a balanced deck, but will also lose some efficiency as a result of its design. This is also a focus deck which prioritizes threats over answers, optimizing for the short game. A focus deck seeks to close out the game before a value deck can take over. Our commander for the deck is Galta, Primal Hunger. 10, green green for a 12-12 legendary creature elder dinosaur with trample, and Galta, Primal Hunger costs X less to cast, where X is the total power of creatures you control. Our main goal with the deck is to try to storm off, leveraging this unique cost reduction mechanic on Galta, often using Galta as a ritual, as draw fodder, as just about everything else we need to make the deck hum. In terms of strengths, Galta has some consistent early game with mana dorks. Explosive card draw potential means you're still dangerous when you're in top deck mode, and green's limited tutors feel unrestricted in this style of deck, and tutors to play cards like Green Sun Zenith allow for a significantly higher degree of consistency. In terms of weaknesses though, interaction is quite limited in Mono Green without a toolbox commander. Being dependent on having bodies on the field leaves the deck vulnerable to mass answers like board wipes, and it can be hard to recover if you've emptied your hand getting set up only to be wiped out with a single spell before you can go for it. Compared to the optimized CDH Silvala Heart of the Wilds deck, Galta lacks access to the consistent draw engine from the command zone opting instead for a virtual ritual in the command zone. And Galta is very vulnerable to be stolen. If you suspect a Gilded Drake or Control Magic effects, don't cast Galta without already having access to a Sacrifice Outlet or a Bounce effect like Team or Sabretooth. Galta's unique cost reduction mechanic means that classic green dorks like Llanor Elves and Elvish Mystic literally pull double duty, with each one reducing the cost of Galta by one and then providing an additional green towards actually casting Galta. Galta can also utilize undercosted fatties to further reduce cost, though the current build of the deck has cut creatures like Ronas the Indomitable to add greater redundancy to the primary win condition. What really brings a Brostorm deck together? What makes this deck possible at all are the large-scale draw effects such as Greater Good and Life's Legacy, allowing us to trade Galta for a massive amount of gas. This aspect, supported by reusable mana generators such as Food Chain, enable us to repeatedly cast Galta much more easily. Most of Galta's interaction is focused on being offensive, forcing our game plan through. Green's suite of counterspells are not effective in stopping another player's attempts to win, but are quite effective at shielding us during a storm turn. Further, the focus nature of the deck restricts some of our options. In general, Galta is unable to reach the more optimized quadrant, or the highest heights of Linear because of the inconsistency of her interaction suite. Answers such as Reclamation Sage and Beast Within should be used selfishly to remove roadblocks towards your own attempt to win, ideally waiting to remove them until you are ready to go for it. Galta wants to rely on other decks to have answers to earlier threats which affect all players, forcing opponents to spend interaction on one another. This has the side benefit of depleting interaction left to handle Galta. Galta has a number of limited options to tutor up the right answers to major threats to her game plan such as cards like Curse of Totem. If you suspect this type of stacks, it's important to hold up tutors for Reclamation Sage in order to handle them. Against cards like Narset, Parter of Ales, you need to be willing to expend bodies on the field as attackers to remove Narset if you're going to have any hope of being able to go for it with Galta, even though this can represent a squeeze to your mana supply. Against creatures like Spirit of the Labyrinth, options are very slim, and we must rely on cards like Beast Within or Kenrith's Transformation in order to remove these obstacles. Early game, try to prioritize getting mana dorks onto the battlefield. If no specific interaction or stacks pieces from your opponents are suspected, early tutors will often be for either Selvala, Heart of the Wild, or 
Omnath Locus of Mana. The latter is exceptionally strong and will almost always guarantee a Gaul to cast on the next turn. This has to do with a unique rules interaction with the way costs are determined when casting spells. After you apply cost increases and discounts, you lock the cost of the spell in and then pay for the costs of that spell. This means that if you have a 12 power Omnath in play, you will lock in Galta's cost at minus 12, meaning that Galta's cost will be simply green green. You can then remove that green mana from your mana pool, let Omnath shrink back down and then cast Galta as the cost has already been locked in. If you're stuck in a seat where you're on the value end of the table or you're simply waiting for your opening, it's often fine to just cast Galta with no payoffs simply to be in pressuring your opponents with a 12-12 trampler. Be careful at playing Galta and your dorks into opponents who are likely to be heavy in sweepers. Most of this deck's storm turns are going to revolve around a mana dork who can tap for massive amounts of mana, such as Silvala, Heart of the Wild. Silvala is one green green for a 2-3 legendary creature elf scout with the triggered ability whenever another creature enters the battlefield, its controller may draw a card if its power is greater than each other creature's power. It also has an activated mana ability of green tap, add X mana in any combination of colors to your mana pool where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Taken together, this makes Silvala particularly potent for our deck's game plan because she allows us to go up 11 mana with her activated ability when Galta is on the field, and this is often enough for us to easily start storming off. Other dorks in the deck, which present a similar possibility, include cards like Priest of Titania, Elvish Archdruid, and Circle of Dreams Druid, among others. Galta is particularly dangerous when the deck can use multiple activations of one of these big mana dorks. Wirewood Lodge can untap all of these elves for another go-around, and Wirewood Symbiote can bounce a lesser dork to untap one of our big mana dorks. A special note should be made for Quirion Ranger and Scrib Ranger, both of which allow us to tap a forest for green, then return it to our hand and untap a big mana dork. Then play that forest we bounced as our land for turn to tap for another green, which can often leapfrog us a turn ahead to get Galta into play, even if we are not hitting our land drops from the top of our library. Infinite mana loops do exist in the deck, usually relying on Teamer Sabretooth plus a haste enabler, like Concordant Crossroads or a Thousand Year Elixir. So long as you have a dork who can tap for an amount of green mana greater than its mana value plus two, you can generate infinite green mana with infinite creature casts. Once we have infinite mana, we also generally have haste, so we are only bounded by the number of card draw spells that we can manage to chain together. If everything is going according to plan, your goal is to cast Galta with a payoff card in hand, drawing a massive number of cards off of an effect like Greater Good, Garak Primal Hunter, or Rishkar's Expertise. Ideally, you also have an effect like Silvala, Heart of the Wild in hand, who can act as a glimpse of nature effect and lets you cantrip off of your casts of Galta. Cashing out Galta for cards or mana is usually step one in lines that win the game. Galta plus a glimpse of nature effect will generally draw you your deck when combined with a card like Food Chain. Galta with open mana and a big draw effect like Life's Legacy will often lead you to being able to chain together multiple draw effects until you can refresh your mana with an untapper like Vitalize. The ideal endpoint for Galta is a card like Aetherflux Reservoir. This 4-mana artifact says whenever you cast a spell, you gain life for each spell you've cast this turn. Then, pay 50 life, Aetherflux Reservoir deals 50 damage to target creature or player. In a storm deck like this, if you were to cast 15 spells in a single turn, you would have gained 120 life. If you started the turn at 40 life, that would mean 160 life, Bang, 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 three opponents take 50 damage, you're left with 10 life and you win the game. If you had been reduced to one life on the turn that you decided to go off, you would only need to cast 17 spells to gain a total of 153 life and mow down the table with the glorious fishbowl. Psychosis Crawler is a more recent addition to the deck, which means it was a gross oversight on my part during earlier versions of this deck, and it pings your opponents for each card you draw while also serving to reduce the cost of Galta even further. This 5-mana artifact creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your hand, meaning that the Crawler itself will often be reducing Galta's casting cost to green-green. And, since it pings opponents for each card you draw, well, it doesn't take too many Life's Legacies or Rich Cars Expertises 
to draw that many cards and wipe your opponents out. Sometimes Fishbowl doesn't happen. Sometimes you cannot get Psychosis Crawler to stick to the board. It might get countered or it might get destroyed. There are some regrowth effects in the deck to dig it back out of the graveyard if needed, but sometimes it's on to plan B. In those cases, overrun type effects are the deck's secondary win condition. With Ronas's Monument being one of the all-stars here. Ronas's Monument is 3 mana for a legendary artifact which says green creature spells you cast cost 1 less to cast and whenever you cast a creature spell, target creature you control gets plus 2 plus 2 and gains trample until end of turn. This on-cast trigger, granting plus 2 plus 2 to another creature, pays for Galta's commander tax, and the trample means eventually you are going to be able to go wide and go over everyone else's defenses, even if it just means pumping up some dorks over and over. Return of the Wild Speaker is another all-star, which provides both the much-needed large-scale draw effect, which forms the backbone of the deck's primary game plan, while also bringing an alternate mode with an overrun. Finale of Devastation for 10 green green to go grab a Great Oak Guardian, untapping your board, and giving them all plus 12, plus 12, and trample is yet another way to bring the game home with a powerful tutor, which also serves your primary game plan. When all else fails, your commander is still a 12-12 with trample. You threaten two shots when the game stalls out or after repeated board wipes. It can be really hard to keep you off of your commander when every single creature you top deck from that point on gets you that much closer to casting Galta again. As a final note, if you want to try this deck for yourself, be sure to consider your mulligans carefully. Galta really wants both a one-drop form of ramp on turn one and then a way to start churning through the deck in order to draw multiple cards throughout the game. If you have a clear path to 10 power in hand, an early mana drop, and some sort of draw, you're probably going to want to keep that hand. Don't worry too much about that early interaction. Galta is inherently a greedy deck with a focused linear game plan. If Galta sounds like your kind of storm deck, or your kind of dinosaur, I have posted a link to the deck list in the description of this episode. Let me know what you think, and let me know what video primer you want to see come up next. You can shoot us an email where we are gemstonemindpodcast at gmail.com. You can leave us a message on YouTube where we are gemstonemindpodcast, or you can add us on Twitter where we are at gemstonemindmtg. Until next time, I'm John, and this is Gemstone Mind.